Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about flavonoids and their chemistry in easy way. First of all let us see the general structure of the flavonoids. This is the general structure of flavonoids. Now here we can observe one of the heterocyclic ring system. So this ring is nothing but benzopyran. Benzopyran is a oxygen containing ring system where the benzene is fused with the pyran. Now let us give the numbering to this ring system. We have to start the numbering from the oxygen. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the numbering to the main ring system benzopyran. And at the second position we can observe the phenyl ring. Again we can give the numbering to this phenyl ring. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. We have given the prime in order to differentiate the numbering of main ring as well as the side chain. Now this is the general structure of the flavonoids which can be modified at the different positions. For example one of the important modification is the change in the location of phenyl ring. Now here you can observe that the phenyl ring is attached to the main chain at the second position. But this phenyl ring can also be present at the third position where they are also called as flavonoids but they are the isomers of these flavonoids so we have to use the prefix iso. So they are commonly known as isoflavonoids. Except in the isoflavonoids, in all other flavonoids, phenyl ring is present at the second position. Similarly, other modifications are saturation of the double bond between the second and third carbon and introduction of a ketone or OH group at the fourth position and substitution of the OH groups at the different positions on the phenyl rings. By all of these modifications, we can observe so many types of uh, flavonoids which are present in the various types of plants. So today in this video let us discuss about the chemistry of flavonoids and how easily we can remember. First one is the flavones. Flavones having the general structure like this and here you can observe they are having a ketone group at the fourth position. So that's why they are having the suffix own. So now basic ring system is having the prefix flav and the suffix can be modified by the ketone group at the fourth position so own is the suffix so flav plus one it becomes flavone so flavones will have a keto group at the fourth position so we have the four types of flavones which can be remembered by this code c a l t c indicates the chrysine a indicates epigenin and l indicates luteolin and t indicates tricetin so chrysine, epigenin, luteolin and tricetin. These are arranged based on the number of OH groups that are going to be increased in these flavone structures. So chrysine is having the OH groups at 5th and 7th position of the main ring. So it's a 5,7 dihydroxy. But in the epigenin we can observe another hydroxyl group at the 4th position of the phenyl group at the 2nd position. So 5,7,4 4 prime trihydroxy. And in the luteolin, we can observe one more hydroxy group. Now it becomes tetrahydroxy. So it is 5, 7, 3 prime, 4 prime tetrahydroxy. So it is having the two OH groups at third and fourth position on the phenyl ring attached at the second position. And finally, tricetin is having the five OH groups. So it is pentahydroxy. So it is nothing but 5, 7, 3 prime, 4 prime, 5 prime pentahydroxy. So OH groups are present at 3rd, 4th and 5th positions on the phenyl ring attached at the 2nd position. So these are the important flavones, chrysine, epigenin, luteolin and tricetin. We can remember as CALT. So this is the chrysine. Chrysine is having the OH group at the 5th position and another OH group at the 7th position. So this is nothing but 5,7 dihydroxy flavone. Similarly, second one is the epigenin. Epigenin is having the three hydroxyl groups. One is at the fifth position and seventh position. And third OH group is present at the para position of the phenyl ring, otherwise the fourth position. So epigenin is nothing but 574 prime trihydroxy flavone. And next one is the luteolin. Luteolin is having the four hydroxyl groups. One is at the fifth position and another one is at the seventh position. Other two OH groups are present on the phenyl ring at third position as well as the fourth position. So luteolin is a tetrahydroxy compound. So which is nothing but 5, 7, 3 prime, 4 prime tetrahydroxy flavone. And finally tricetin. Tricetin is a pentahydroxy derivative. 
so OH groups at fifth position, seventh position, and other OH groups at the third position, fourth position, fifth position on the final ring. So tricetin is the five seven three prime four prime five prime pentahydroxy flavone. So now in all these structures, you can observe that. OH groups are present on the benzopyran ring only at the two positions, fifth position and seventh position. And other extra OH groups are mainly present on the phenyl ring which is attached to the second position to the benzopyran. Now second one is the flavanols. Flavanols are having the general structure like this. And here they are still having the ketone group. But what is the difference? They are having a hydroxyl group at the third position. Now they are having both ketone at the fourth position and OH group at the third position. So that's why we can compile the name as flav plus because ketone is present on plus and another suffix is the vol which indicates OH group at the third position. Now flav plus on plus ol it becomes flavonol. We should not confuse this flavonol with the flavonol which is a different flavonoid. Now flavonols are having a ketone group at fourth position and extra OH group at the third position. Already we have seen two important flavones. One is the epigenin. This epigenin can be modified such that we are going to introduce a extra OH group at the third position. Then epigenin can be converted into campiferol. Similarly, lutein can be modified such that it is going to be converted into quercetin. So epigenin is normally trihydroxy derivative but campiferol now becomes tetrahydroxy derivative because of the extra OH group at the third position. So camphorol is nothing but 3574 prime tetrahydroxy derivative. Similarly quercetin is again having the extra OH group at the third position. So now it becomes pentahydroxy. So it is nothing but 357 3 prime 4 prime pentahydroxy derivative. In this way camphorol and quercetin both are related to the epigenin and luteolin with an extra OH group at the third position. So this is the structure of campferol which is having the OH group at the third position, fifth position and seventh position as well as one more OH group at the fourth position of the phenyl ring. So campferol is nothing but 357 4 prime tetrahydroxy flavone. Similarly another one is the quercetin. Quercetin is having the OH group at third position, fifth position and seventh position and uh, other watch groups at the third and fourth position on the phenyl ring. So quercetin is 3, 5, 7, 3 prime, 4 prime pentahydroxy flavone. In this way flavonols are the derivatives of the flavones where they are having an extra OH group at the third position. Next one is the isoflavones. This is the general structure of isoflavones. Now you can observe they are having the phenyl ring which is attached at the third position. In all other flavonoids, phenyl ring is present at the second position, but in the isoflavones, phenyl ring is present at the third position. So here, instead of the suffix, we are going to use the prefix iso plus flav plus one because ketone is the functional group at the fourth position. So this is nothing but isoflavone. So we have two isoflavones which can be remembered as D and G. D is the diagene and G is the Genistein. Now diagen is having the 7, 4 prime dihydroxy derivative whereas genistein is the 5, 7, 4 prime trihydroxy derivative. So this is the structure of the diagen. Diagen is having OH group at the 7th position on the main ring as well as another OH group at the para position of the phenyl ring. So diagen is a dihydroxy isoflavone so which is nothing but 7, 4 prime dihydroxy isoflavone. So here we have to use the isoflavone as the suffix because phenyl ring is attached at the third position. Similarly this is the structure of genistein. Genistein is having extra OH group. So one is at the fifth position and the one at the seventh position. Similarly another OH group is present at the fourth position of the phenyl ring. So genistein is nothing but 574 prime trihydroxy isoflavone. So these are the two isoflavones diagene and genistein. Next one is the flavonones. Now this is the general structure of flavonones. Here again you can observe a ketone group. But what is the modification? Second and third position there is a saturation. That's why the name is somewhat modified. Now the name is flav plus 
because it is saturated we can use the suffix in and since it is having a ketone at the fourth position so another suffix is the one so flav plus an plus one that becomes flavanone so here an indicates it is saturated the second and third position now the flavanones are having saturation at the second and third position again we can relate them with the normal flavones so we have one of the flavone epigenin this epigenin if it is saturated it can be converted into norenginin and utilin can be saturated to produce the hesperitin so norenginin and hesperitin are the two flavonones which are acting like the aglycones in few of the glycosides so norenginin is again trihydroxy derivative just like the epigenin so it is nothing but 574 prime trihydroxy whereas hesperitin is just like the luteolin which is a tetrahydroxy derivative so it is 573 prime trihydroxy but one of the virtue group at the fourth position is uh, converted into methoxy so 4 prime methoxy now this is the norenginin you can observe fifth position OH group seventh position and OH group and at the para portion of the phenyl ring one more OH group so it is uh, 574 prime trihydroxy flavonone so now the suffix is flavonone where an indicates it is saturated at the second and third position similarly this is a structure of hesperitin we should not confuse with the hesperidin hesperidin is the glycoside hesperidin is the egg glycone now it is having the OH group at fifth position and seventh position and another OH group at the third position but other OH group is coming to methoxy group at the fourth position so hesperidin is nothing but 573 prime trihydroxy 4 prime methoxy flavonone so norenginin and hesperidin are the two important flavonones which are present in the citrus fruits and they are having a saturation at the second and third position next one is a flavon triol so this is the structure of flavon triol so here we can observe saturation between second and third carbon and extra OH group at the third position so now the name is flav plus an plus because it is saturated and then ol but this ol is present at the third position so 3 ol so flav an plus 3 ol which is nothing but flavin 3 ol so now this flavin 3 ol are having a saturation at the second and third position along with OH group at the third position so now we can relate these compounds with the flavonols flavonols are also having the OH group at the third position so one of the flavonol is the quercetin this quercetin can be related with the catechin now catechin just like the quercetin it is pent so it is 3 5 7 3 prime 4 prime pentahydroxy derivative so this is the structure of catechin and you can observe OH group at third position fifth position seventh position as well as fourth position of the phenyl ring and third position of the phenyl ring so it is a pentahydroxy derivative just like the quercetin so catechin is the 3 5 7 3 prime 4 prime pentahydroxy flavon but here the suffix is not the flavonol it is a flavon which indicates it is saturated the second and third position so that is the catechin now this catechin is having the OH group at the third position which is having optical activity now when it is attached above the plane it is a catechin and we can have another structure like this this is the epicatechin which is having a reverse configuration at the third position sixth one is the anthocyanidins so this is the general structure of anthocyanidins and you can observe they are having OH group at the third position and an extra double bond says that they are forming a oxonium ion now they are made up of flavile ring system and the positive charge on the oxygen can be represented with the suffix IUM so this ring is nothing but the flavilium so anthocyanidins are having the flavilium ring system where oxygen is getting the positive charge so this is one of the structure cyanidin cyanidin is just like the quercetin it's having OH group at uh, 3, 5th and 7th positions as well as another OH group at 3rd position and 4th position on the phenyl ring but it is a cation with a positive charge on the oxygen so cyanidin is 3, 5, 7, 3 prime, 4 prime pentahydroxy flavalium cyanidin present as a salt because it's having a cation so these are the various types of flavonoids which can be easily remembered by remembering the first flavones the first flavones are the CALT 
C indicates crysine, A indicates epigenine, L indicates lutein, and T indicates tricetine. Here, crysine is having the two hydroxyl groups, epigenine three hydroxyl groups, lutein four hydroxyl groups, and tricetine five hydroxyl groups. These flavones can be modified to produce the different types of flavonoids. When extra OH group is present at the third position, they are called flavonols. And when the phenyl ring is shifted from second position to the third position, they are called as isoflavones. When the double bond at the second and third position is saturated, they are called as flavonones. And along with saturation, if extra OH group is present at the third position, they can be called as flavon triols. And these flavonoids can also be modified such that they are going to form a cation with positive charge on the oxygen. They are called as flavaliums which are also known as anthocyanidins. In this way, flavonoids can be converted into six types of compounds which can be interrelated very easily by remembering the first category of the flavonoids. So that's about the chemistry of these flavonoids. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.